Hey, it's Kim McKay. Tywin Lannister truly is the greatest character in all of Game of Thrones. Lannisters don't act like fools. Now, I don't know if it's just me, but I believe that Tywin Lannister is unfairly portrayed as this terrible, monstrous person in Game of Thrones, mainly because he has to constantly fight the Starks, the POV characters we follow, because of the terrible mistakes of his children. Anyone who looks into his history and sees the achievements he's done, his history, and all the challenges he has to overcome to be able to achieve the position he is in now, know that he is a man who's really dedicated to the realm, his house, and deserves much more honor and respect than he gets. Now if that sounds off to you, just wait till the end of the video and I'm sure you'll have a different perspective entirely. I'm going to start off by looking at this quote from Kevin Lannister that really triggered me to make this video as it showed the insight to really how great of a character Tywin Lannister is. You are my brother's son. You might remind him of that. Do you think he would allow you to take the black if you were not his own blood? And Joanna's? Tywin seems a hard man to you, I know, but he is no harder than he's had to be. Our own father was gentle and amiable, but so weak, his bannermen mocked him in their cups. Some saw fit to defy him openly. Other lords borrowed our gold and never troubled to repay it. At court, they japed of toothless lions. Even his mistress stole from him. A woman scarcely one step above a whore, and she helped herself to my mother's jewels. It fell to Tywin to restore House Lannister to its proper place, just as it fell to him to rule this realm when he was no more than twenty. He bore that heavy burden for twenty years, and all it earned him was a mad king's envy. Instead of the honor he deserved, he was made to suffer slights beyond count. Yet he gave the seven kingdoms peace, plenty, and justice. He is a just man. You would be wise to trust him. Tyrion blinked in astonishment. Sir Kevin had always been solid, stolid, pragmatic. He'd never heard him speak with such fervor before. Now this conversation comes at a point where everyone hates Tywin the most properly books and show it's during Tyrion's trial for Joffrey's death. So clearly we can see that Lord Tywin Lannister was absolutely incredible. He won back rebellions against the Tarbacks and the Reigns. He ruled the Westerlands extremely well, making every house loyal and important to the whole. Tywin was an exceptional strategist who knew how to plan and play the Game of Thrones. And do you think he ever lost? You think I'd be in my position if I'd lost a war? As a battle commander, Tywin used everything to his advantage. Rivers, streams, his warriors, deception, murder, everything. And as Kevin said, he gave peace and plenty to all of Westeros for 20 years. And most of all, he is very good at controlling people in the ways he needs. Whether that's sending a harpsman to one of his rebel battlemen to put them back in line with one song, Reigns of Castamere, or... I'll leave the king's guard. I'll take my place as your son and heir if you let Tyrion live. Done. Now, of course, there are many very big downsides to Tywin as a character. He is not kind in the slightest, and this comes across very negatively to many viewers, but I personally view him in a very different way. So I'm going to go through these kind of cons to his character and show you how I believe that they aren't really that bad for his character. Let's start with the Reigns of Castamere, the personification of how he absolutely brutally murdered two whole families. Now, to understand this rebellion fully, we must talk about Titus Lannister, that is Titus Tywin's father, a very weak and brile man as the quote pulled out that Kevin said, and it was up to Tywin to fix the mistakes that he made when he was ruling. So at this stage, Tywin wasn't lord yet, he was simply the son of Titus Lannister. So when this rebellion started, it really freaked Titus out because he had no idea how to deal with it as he was a very weak man. So Tywin took charge, quickly moved his house forward, took out Tarbuck Hall, burned it to the ground, took out the forces of the reins that had come to protect Tarbuck Hall, raced them back to Castamere where they barricade themselves into a mountain. Then Tywin in his first stroke of tactical genius, barricaded all of the entrances to Castamere, rediverted a local stream to the one of the 
entrances so that the water would seep through the crabs, fill up the entire mountain and kill everyone with no loss of life from his side. This first rebellion showed how immensely strong he was and brood who would be, making all of his bannermen become extremely loyal and important to the Westerlands. On the grand scheme of the timeline that they're living in, Westeros, the world of ice and fire, it is not unheard of to kill off the families of people you're fighting against. Just look at Robert's Rebellion, the Targaryens and so many other examples. One whole family dying is nothing compared to the thousands that die in battles over the puny squabbles of lords. Hundreds of thousands of people across the Westerlands had peace, plenty, and justice for decades because of Tywin's actions and skill. Immoral acts in a Game of Thrones have always been taken by even our most favorite characters like Danny killing all the slavers and pinning them up against giant crosses, torturing them slowly through the death of the sun and bleeding out, and we don't call her evil. Now another reason people don't like Tywin at all is because of his extremely dirty tactics when it comes to war. His personal philosophy on wars is them against him, his family, his people, and he wants to end it with minimal lives as possible and move back to peace and growing his family. Why is he still alive? It wouldn't have been clean. Things like the Red Wedding helped save thousands of lives and quickly start restore people's lives back who had lost them from this terrible war. And even acts like setting the mountain out with raids of men to rape and pillage through the riverlands is tactics that the Starks employed themselves. Let's look at the Brothers Without Banners and how they talk about the Starks and the Lions being exactly the same. They're both just terrible people sending either their men into the riverlands or into the westerlands to do the same horrible stuff. It's just a tactic of war. And then of course is King's Landing with him going in and pillaging it and killing off Elia and her children, which is a main contention with Doran. But to be 100% honest, Robert was going to kill them anyway. He just didn't want to do it personally himself. And so as Tywin says to justify his actions, they needed to make that last very strong ditch effort of loyalty to make it so they, they wouldn't get invaded in the Westerlands from Robert, because that would just cause another long bloody war and more people dying. So whichever way I look at these actions, they're all just smart and they end up in saving more people's lives and protecting his family, which is all you can really ask from a person to do. Although he's not completely villainous, I mean, he's very much a man of his society because the Seven Kingdoms, it, it's a feudal society. And the only way to survive in feudal society is to behave in the way that Tywin Lannister does because he, there's always somebody waiting to come and jump on if you fall off and he's in a position of power and he needs to consolidate that and stay in that position as long as he can and he has to be quite ruthless. Never more ruthless than when he's dealing with his least favorite son. Now there is one thing that makes everyone who ever watched Game of Thrones hate Tywin the most for, and this is his terrible relationship with Tyrion. Now at first when you're watching this, it just seems like he's a backwards person who can't stand that his son is a dwarf and he hates him for that and constantly tries to kill him and undermine him. He's such an evil and dark father, no one should ever like him. And this view completely ignores all of Tywin's history, the struggles he's gone through that makes him very much just like Tyrion for no fault of his own. Now, Tywin's sister once said that all of his smiles belong to Joanna, his wife. He spent his entire life devoted to service, whether it's service to his house, service to the Westerlands, or service to the realm. The only thing in this entire world that he did for his own happiness was marrying his wife, Joanna. So it's assumed that Tyrion is misliked deeply by Tywin, mainly because he killed his beloved wife as he came out as a baby. But this goes way deeper than just that. It is believed that on a visit to Castle Rock, the Mad King blessed or even raped Joanna. This action is why Tywin actually tried to resign as Hand the King, but was refused by the King, and is the main reason why he believes that Tyrion may not be his son. Just imagine Tywin's best friend, the person who he liked the most, who he served decades of his life to help rule, who slowly went mad and betrayed him and hated him and called him names and made the court mock him, then raped his wife and had a child with her. Jaina was all of Tywin's happiness in the world, and not only was she raped 
and then forced to have this child, but the child ended up killing her, removing her from this world. And then what does this child become? A dwarf that he has to raise as his son. A laughing stock of how sinister, and laughing has been something that has driven him mad his entire life. The shame that Titus Lannister, his father, brought to House Lannister was something he had to deal with. And then this child comes who's dwarf and makes a laughing stock of his family, gets drunk all the time, and it's not even possibly his son, and it killed his wife, and all that bundled up in one ugly face, and that is why he hates Tyrion. When have you ever done something that wasn't in your interest, but solely for the benefit of the family? The day that you were born. I wanted to carry you into the sea and let the waves wash you away. Instead, I let you live, and I brought you up as my son, because you're a Lannister. So to conclude, for the time period he's living in, for the world of Vice and Fire and the other lords around, he has been very smart, strong, and willful to protect his family, his people, and serve the realm. His philosophy is go hard or go die, because in the Game of Thrones you win or you die. So this is why I believe that Tywin Lannister is the best character in Game of Thrones, my favorite character in Game of Thrones, and he is a complete boss that you should not mess with.